I don't want to listen to his podcast, huh? Dude, it's educational. And besides, I've been wanting to listen to this one. Welcome to Idling in the Impala, a podcast by and for lovers of supernatural and the fan fiction it inspires. Before we begin, just want to remind you to like, subscribe, follow wherever you listen to us so you don't miss any episodes or bonus stuff that we do. I'm Sandra. I'm Carly. And it's another episode of uh, Fact vs. Fiction. Yay! Yay! Pipe, 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 pipe. Professor Fact Carly fiction. is in the house. <laughs> Sex education with Carly. <laughs> I, I won't quit my day job, guys. I won't quit my day job. So this is... It's probably going to be part one in a trilogy around a theme. It's not the first part we've recorded, so, you know, that's that's fun. We're so fucking professional, guys. But it is, what after I'd recorded the second part, I was like, wait, this can't, this can't go out. There's like a whole other bunch of shit that needs to come first. This episode is going to be around consent. So before we begin, like, I do disclaimers before these anyway, guys, but before we begin, like, massive, massive major disclaimer, this topic is potentially going to be very triggering and we want you to be safe and healthy far more than we are ever going to care about views, likes, comments, any of that stuff. So big ass trigger warning. We will be discussing rape and other non-consensual activities. And if you think that this is something that you can't listen to, please just click off and we'll see you in the next one. Like it's, you know, no hard feelings. We are not going to be upset if this, you know, doesn't get the views we expected to get or anything like that. We want you safe far more than we care about that so but i couldn't release the other episode without going through this one first so here we are this is going to be kind of a general fact versus fiction on consent and the various ways that um consent play appears in fact versus fiction but it does tie into other bdsm kind of episodes that have been recorded and will be released in the future consent is not it, you know, it's not just about any kind of BDSM or kink activities. It is prevalent in every single sexual encounter that you will ever have. So I felt that it would be remiss for me to start harping on about, you know, stuff in the BDSM kink community without covering this really crucial topic first. So general basic disclaimers. I am by no means an expert in BDSM or, you know, anything like that. I'm just a model who knows some stuff. So do your research before you delve into the world of kink. Be safe, be sane, and for the love of God, make sure it's consensual. <laughs> Disclaimer the second, I am not a sex expert, despite repeated attempts to pass the exams. They just don't let me, guys. I don't know why. I'm hilarious, and I know stuff, obviously. <laughs> this is for entertainment and fictional writing purposes only. It is not intended to replace actual medical advice. If you have concerns about your intimate health, please contact a professional doctor. We are not professional doctors, guys. We're just two <laughs> people on the internet who like to talk about shit. You know, speak to a real professional. We are not that we are not the person. We're just gonna entitle this consent. It's gonna cover like a whole heap of stuff. I don't think Sandra knows how long it's gonna go yet. I have my thoughts, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes when we get Carly there. has five pages of notes, so this could be a while. This could be a while. Are you, are you proud of me, guys? I are you am. proud of me? I'm proud, I'm of, proud of me. I'm proud of you. So yeah. got lots of bullets, got lots of things to talk about. So this this could be a while. This could take this could take a bit. So settle in. Uh, yeah. Grab a this drink a if mi- you need one. <laughs> this could could take a minute. The first question, and I like I'm fully aware that I'm preaching to the choir here because I think if you don't know stuff around this by you know like the basics around consent by now um what are you doing on my podcast first of all but i i will say i think this does just pose a lot of questions for people who may not have even considered it i've seen a lot of fic out there that i think could be Mm. written with the assumption that you think you know but you don't so Mm -hmm. i think this is a good first question to start out with absolutely yeah Oh, thank you. And I will say for any of you out there who are readers of my work and who are now holding up flashing neon signs that say, what about junkies, Carly? I'm aware. I know. I'm going to haul myself up on the cross later on the episode. I am aware. All right. So, you know, put down the torches and pitchforks. We'll get to it. But the first, you know, the first sort of question, you know, fact versus fiction to address, I guess, is what is consent? So I Googled it. And I went to a few various dictionary websites and they were all like wordy. And the Google definition was the easiest. So this comes from the Oxford Dictionary. Noun, consent, noun, 
permission for something to happen or agreement to do something. For example, no change may be made without the consent of all the partners. Also, verb, give permission for something to happen. Example, he consented to a search by a detective. So it is your permission for something to happen. Okay, either something outside of yourself or for something to happen to you. But that is, at the very base of it, that is what the dictionary defines consent as. And see, you think that's pretty cut and dried, isn't it? It <laughs> makes sense, you know? But then you delve a little bit deeper and you're like, ooh, this is a, oh dear, this is a tangle. Okay. So let's let's try and, you know, untangle some things there. So it is literally impossible to discuss this solely in the realms of supernatural fan fiction because consent and the wave plethora epidemic whatever you want to call it of people not respecting other people's consent is enormous all around the world not just in my country not just in sandra's country so Mm -hmm. It is impossible to just really narrow this down to fiction and fanfic specifically. So we are going to be talking about fanfic tropes, but we're also going to be talking a lot about real life and what consent means and how, you know, people can try and manipulate your consent and things like that. So again, if you thought the first trigger warning was you were like, none of this is cool and you've got this far and now I've said that, if you need to know about, it's totally cool. You know, please protect yourself protect your mental health far above anything else because this is not going to be easy Mm -hmm. to talk about certainly Mm -hmm. so if we've established what consent is there are types of consent now maybe this is news to you maybe this is not news to some of you some of these things we've touched on before in other fes um some of them may be new but types of consent so verbal this is the big one this is the big neon sign thing absolutely nothing should proceed without verbal consent okay absolutely nothing if the word no comes out of somebody's mouth that should shut the whole thing down irrespective of everything else all right now that might be it shuts it down for five minutes while you have a conversation or that shuts it down entirely that is you know dependent on the situation that you are in verbal consent is freely given and enthusiastic now i would get back to that a bit later on but just in brief if someone nags you or you nag somebody else until they just go oh fine whatever that is not consent okay and we will we will come back to that but it is freely given it does not need to be coerced or manipulated out of someone and it is enthusiastic you know fuck yes and i suppose so Mm -hmm. are very different they're both in agreement but they're very different it is informed so this ties into this ties into a lot of things but you can link this very easily to bdsm okay informed consent that is that the person knows exactly what they are consenting to you are not hiding anything from them you are not misleading them in any way or you are not being misled in any way the person who is consenting knows exactly what is going to happen and they are consenting to that. And specific. Now, these all come under verbal. We're not like, these are not all the types of consent. This all just comes under verbal. Specific. Again, we will come back to this later on, but consenting to a specific sexual act does not mean that the person consents to all sexual acts. And mm-hmm. like I said, we will discuss that. But, you know... If you consent to have vaginal penetrative sex with a partner and they try to stick it up your ass, that is not okay. You do not consent to that. Mm -hmm. You know, unless they ask you and you're like, yeah, fine, go for it. Use lube. Remember, we've talked about this, guys. But if they don't, you know, if nothing is said and then just whoop, there it is, that is not okay. (laughs) You did not consent to that. All right. So, you know, just I'm hoping, it is my hope as we get through this, that there will not be that many people that go, (gasps) Oh, fuck, I didn't realise that. But there might be. So, Mm. you know, be aware. It's You would think it would be an easier topic than it actually is when you get into it. Yeah. But all those things, verbal consent. 
The second type of consent is physical consent. So again, this is kind of a trope. one thing, but your body can be yeah. telling somebody the total opposite too. Yeah. You know? And this this is kind of a trope. You know, your mouth says no, but your body says yes. Ick. Mm. So you got to bear in mind facial expressions, body language. Is you you know is someone flinching away from your touch? And this is not just when you are propositioning somebody or being propositioned. This is ongoing as well. Mm-hmm. You know, if I say yes to something, but then when it happens, I'm like, oh no, don't you know, don't do that. You do not carry on that act because I have made it clear that I'm not okay. You know, my consent has been withdrawn. So you need to pause. You need to check in. Maybe you need to stop that. Maybe we have a conversation about it, whatever it is. But physical consent is just as important as verbal consent. You know, just because somebody says yes does not mean that they... See, it's difficult because if somebody says yes... But we'll get we'll get into that. We will get into that. But physical consent as well. Don't just take somebody's word at face value. And also, bringing this back to... We discussed this real early on in, like, the first... FVF when I was like, please be careful before footing stuff up your ass or anybody else's ass. <laughs> Pay attention to body language. Somebody might not be enjoying that. This ties into that as well. And the third kind of consent is continued consent, which is more where the physical thing comes into it. It's ongoing. Okay. It can be with consent can be withdrawn at any point. You can be balls deep in somebody and they can withdraw their consent and you need to stop. Or, you know, somebody can be balls deep in you and you can withdraw your consent and that person should stop, okay? It is not a one and done situation. It's ongoing. Mm. So you should be checking in, especially if it is a new partner. See, like me and my husband have been together almost 12 years now. He doesn't need to check in with every single move that he makes. We know each other well. But a new partner, you should be checking in. If you're trying something new, you should be checking in. If you're in a scene, you know, be that formal or informal, if if you're, you know, really new to the kink scene or you're a seasoned pro, you should be checking in. Traffic light systems exist for a reason. Continuous mm. checking because things can change very quickly, especially in a heightened situation like, you know, a more structured BDSM scene. Or you can think something super hot in your head. And when you go to do it in reality, you're like, oh God, no, no, absolutely not. You know? So you cannot just, one yes is not carte blanche to do what you want or have somebody do what they want to you. In with that continued consent, that is where the physical stuff comes into it. Pay attention. You know, if you are the the dom or the top in any scenario, you should be paying attention. You should be checking in and looking for those nonverbal cues that things are maybe not as okay as you think they are. And that should be continued throughout. And also if, like I said, a lot of this stuff, like all of this stuff applies to your life, but a lot of it can be sort of narrowed down to kink. If you have a sub that is uh, blindfolded or gagged, you know, who cannot let you know specifically first of all you should always have some form of item or object that they can release to or squeeze or make a noise or something to you know safe word out but a good dom top a good partner in general should be looking for those things anyway so whether you are you know the sub or the dom the top or the bottom however that dynamic works in your relationship a good partner should be looking out for you and you should be looking out for them all those kind of things. But as I said, nothing should proceed without verbal consent, period. So that is kind of, that is where we will start. Okay. I think I'd only add to like about the whole like life partner, long-term partner situation is that physically health-wise with your partners, when things change as well, and you know, when you've been with your partner for years and years and years, there are going to be changes physically health wise Mm -hmm. that I think also have an effect on your sex life and your 
whatever was maybe okay before may not be anymore. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. it's important. The communication part of it is really important in that scenario. Coming from a 50 year year old woman who's in, you know, I I've, I've surpassed the, the, okay, menopause. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm there. (laughs) So your body, (laughs) your body changes too. And, you know, there has to be that care Mm. for your partner that has to be there too continuously, which I'm sure there is for many people with life partners and all that stuff. But just in case, in case you thought, you know, something that you've always, always done, like a good partner is going to still want to know if things are, are okay to continue the way Mm. they did before situation. That's just, yeah. Yeah. You know, (laughs) I'm, I'm younger than Sandra. We're, we're different generations, but you know, I'm getting to that age where my back is like the fuck you are. (laughs) So, you know, that also needs to be taken into consideration. (laughs) You know, you should be like, Oh yeah, no, I really like it when we do that. And then you go your back or your knees or, you know, whatever part of you goes, the fuck you do. And things have to be changed up. So have yeah. you gotten to that point where like everything is like a oh oh yes <laughs> <laughs> out of the chair, out of the car. Oh, it's yeah. like that's it, that's that's all to, and not in the fun way, just uh <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, no. No, no, I've I've got to the point where I give dagger eyes to my husband the following mm. day and I'm like, Do you fucking know what you did? <laughs> like this shoulder is never gonna be right again now. That's it, it's fucked now. This is it, this is my life now. Now I have a fucked shoulder. When people ask me what happened, I'm going to be like, well, I thought I could have sex like I was 20. So yeah, be yeah. aware that life changes <laughs> and bodies change and things like that. And maybe something that has always been absolutely cool, you know, maybe is less cool now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, isn't getting old fun. It's lovely. Absolutely. Lovely. Yeah. Yeah. 10 out of 10 would recommend <laughs> everybody get old. <laughs> now we've established what consent is. There are shitloads of misconceptions around it. Fucking loads, mate. Properly loads. So I gathered up a few of the most common ones. This is not an exhaustive list by any means, but it is the most kind of common misconceptions. And I will I will say here, normally when I do these, I cite my sources. You know, I've never been to university, but I understand that's important or college, whatever you call it. But I understand citing your sources is important. But I cite my sources because I want you guys to be able to access the same resources that I've accessed. And maybe there are things there that are of interest to you. I haven't done that this episode, not because I don't want you guys to be able to find where I found this stuff, but honestly, a lot of it just came from normal Google searches. There wasn't Mm -hmm. any one specific resource that I was looking for. But also, I felt that if anything in this episode was potentially going to trigger or upset somebody, signposting you to places where you can get help was going to be far more important than signposting you to where I found the information that might have upset you. So there are links in this, but they are links to helplines and crisis places like that. But we'll get to that at the bottom. So I have no sources to cite this episode. Because this stuff did- is universal and it sucks. It yeah. sucks. It do. It fucking do. It it really do. But like I said, I started with a Google search, um, ended up, I'll be honest, a lot of the places I ended up were the same kind of charities that, you know, or helplines or things like that, that I am linking you guys to anyway. The what, You know, this is not like a kink subject that's kind of niche. Mm-hmm. So misconceptions around consent. Consent misconception the first consent cannot be withdrawn yes it fucking can okay i literally five minutes ago said it someone you can be balls deep in someone someone can be balls deep in you and consent can still be withdrawn and it's funny actually a few years ago a state in america i forget where it was in the weird bit like the bible belt it doesn't help anymore carly (laughs) It was in the weird bit, yeah. No, it was in the it was in 2017, and it was in uh, North Carolina. So it was right that weird bit. Is North Carolina the Bible Belt, Sandra? I don't feel like uh, it is. Don't think so. No, I don't. I don't think so. But again, you're asking the wrong words. <laughs> the United what States. do you mean? You speak for the entirety of the United <laughs> States, Sandra. We have talked about this. 
But it was in 2017, a bill... Uh, see... At the time, I didn't know as much about American the American legal system as I do now. So it may well have been that it was just a proposed bill. Mm. And I went, oh, fuck, that's like, that's law now. That's disgusting. Mm. You know, it may never have passed. I don't know. Mm. But there was, at some point in 2017, a bill that was, you know, brought up, proposed, mentioned, whatever, that said women cannot withdraw consent once sex has begun in North Carolina. Now... I can follow up and leave some links about that. But as it stands at the moment, I don't know any further than that. I just, something I saw on Facebook and shared very angrily. But that kind of stuff, that's one of the biggest things that you hear. Well, she said yes. You know, well, Mm -hmm. we were already mid act. You know, what what was I going to do? Pull out? Yes, please. Yeah. Please do this. But that is a massive, it's, it's a lie, frankly. It is a lie. You can withdraw your consent for any reason at any time. Okay. While the act is happening, in the in the you know, the lead up to the act, and while the act is happening, you can withdraw your consent at any time for any reason. And nobody should be telling you otherwise. Right? And that means that is we're not just talking about for penalties of sex, that is for any and all sex acts. If someone tries to kiss you and you don't want it it is fine to say no. Even if you just kissed 30 seconds ago, you can say no. Can I say this gets me so mad because all I Uh think about is, and again, not equating this with younger kids and then, but I I feel like there's certain cultures. I know um, Italian families were big on this. Like if somebody, an older person, like a a little kid maybe didn't want to have to go and Mm. give somebody a kiss oh, kiss grandma or kiss your aunt or whatever. It was like, you didn't have a choice. You, yes. Your consent was not something that you were given. And, and even as a child, I think that's so very important to give kids that autonomy to make that decision for themselves. And again, I don't think it's something that people just think it's very, not a big deal, but those kinds of things do make an impression on you know, what the expectation is and consenting mm-hmm. that kind of situation. So the consent, yeah. that, that just, that's, you know, I just, oh, I just, it mm. oh, yep. just gives me mad. Sorry. Yeah. Because what, what are you, what are you teaching children then that their no is not respected? Right. It's not heard. It doesn't matter yeah. what they want to do with their body. Yeah. They will be made to do. And then, you know, you, <laughs> You don't need to be a psychologist to speculate on the effect that that is going to have as that child grows up. And I think... Because it becomes people-pleasing behavior to yeah, an extent. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. And if you've, you know... <laughs> this this is already kind of dark, but um, I'm just going to make it just a teensy bit darker. You know, a baby that nobody attends to when it cries will stop crying because mm-hmm. it knows that nobody's going to come. Yeah. A child that is taught that their no is ignored will just stop saying no. It doesn't mean that they don't want things to happen to them. They just know that nobody's going to listen. Yeah. You know, and we can only imagine how that manifests as, you know, that child goes through puberty, becomes sexually active, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, you know, for all the older generations, you know, are looking down on like my generation and the, the people younger than me and how we're choosing to raise our children. The fact that, you know, a lot of millennials have the same kind of ugh, trauma, maybe, you know, but those same kind of reactions around mm-hmm. being forced to kiss relatives. Mm-hmm. And we are raising our children to be like, it's your body. You say no. And we're yeah. telling those older family members, if they don't want to give you a kiss, they don't have to. If they don't mm-hmm. want to give you a hug, they don't have to give them a high five, give them yeah. a fist bump, you know, re- They're little people respect their body space. Yeah. I don't think that's great. And you see it like schools are doing it as well. Mm -hmm. Um, Not not that, I think that might be more of an American thing because schools in the UK have always been very hands off. You know, you didn't go and hug your teacher really. Yeah, they that 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 has become a thing now where it's not it's not as yeah it's it's not encouraged um, Um, unless you know um, again I think unless there are certain issues where you know the child you know, request one or like, Mm. I remember seeing, I think a, this is a while back, but like a video of a teacher 
greeting all of her kids. I think, I think even a male teacher did the same sort of video where the kids could like tap onto a sign as to oh, they how do the they thing. want to be yeah. greeted. And some wanted a hug, some wanted a high five, some wanted a fist bump. Some just want to do like a little dance, like a little shibby shake or whatever. And that was like, yeah, it was respected. And I thought that was, that was so great. Like, you know, but even if a child did want a hug, like, you know, it was understood that, you know, it was in this safe space of greeting and they were allowed to get one sort of a situation. So yeah, yeah. I, I just, and I, I love think, seeing that. I love seeing, I, I love it. I love seeing that for, for little kids too. Yeah. Yeah. And I think as well, that's such a great example of consent because the children are given the choice every day. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if someone change. came in and wanted a hug yesterday, it's not automatically assumed that they still want that hug today. They yeah. might want a high five today. And that is, I love that so much. Yeah. I love it. Like yeah. I said, you know, we're British. We're not particularly touchy feely at the best of times. That's, no. that's all Italians are. Like, you know, it's like, come on, give me like, you give me the two cheek kiss and give me a hug and, you know, that kind of stuff. So, I mean, again, I, it doesn't come from a nefarious place, but unfortunately, there are people that can use that as a mm. as an in to do other things they shouldn't, and yeah. that's unfortunate in a lot of. I'm sure cultures and stuff too, you know, and uh, across mm. the board. So yeah. 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 And I think, you know, while I am a massive champion of of holding on to cultural heritage and passing it down, you have to take a step back sometimes and think, what is the bigger message that is mm-hmm. being sent here? Mm-hmm. And I don't want to I don't wanna make this a sexist thing. Seeing small female children be forced to kiss and cuddle you know, much older male family members, mm-hmm. especially when the child very clearly does not want to, makes me very, very uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and I'm not, that's not a blanket statement. I'm not casting aspersions on grandparents everywhere. My right. granddad was fucking delightful, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I, as a small child, would be all over him. I'd like throw myself into his lap. You know, mm-hmm. we were very... For Br- for British standards, <laughs> <laughs> quite touchy feely, you know. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm not casting aspersions on on all elderly male relatives there, but you know, it's a it's a stereotype for a reason, isn't it? You know, yeah. There are a lot of the same kind of stories that go around for reasons. So yeah, yeah. I think it's it's always worth even whenever someone says it's always been this way. I think it's always worth taking a step back mm-hmm. and going. Okay, but what is what message is that sending? Yeah, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's great. No, that's that's perfect, though, isn't it? Because if this is the message that we're being sent, like from youth, it would it's it's very difficult then if you are an adult to kind of internalize that you know your no means something, and people Mm -hmm. should listen to that. Yeah, and I mean, if you refused a medical procedure for example your doctor wouldn't go ah come on come on Mm -hmm. i've already got i've prepped everything up now that's all fucking ready come on you Mm -hmm. can't back out now they'd go okay yeah you know and maybe you'd be billed for some shit but they wouldn't (laughs) proceed oh you'd be billed (laughs) (laughs) you'd be billed for some shit well you you wouldn't in the uk you wouldn't in the uk Mm -hmm. um but you know in the us you (laughs) be some bills (laughs) in your way (laughs) But my but my point is, if people in a professional setting have to respect your withdrawal of consent, then surely that would stand to be that people in private settings should also have to with respect your withdrawal of consent. But I think most assigned female at birth people have that story of that guy that wouldn't take no for an answer. Mm-hmm. Um you know, or who carried on after you said no. And we are inclusive. It is not talked about enough. And it is a point further on down this list. It happens to assign male people as well. Yeah. So, you know, while statistically it happens to more assigned female people than assigned male people, that is not to say that it never happens to assigned male people. So that is an utter, not a, I would go, that is a lie about consent it's not even a misconception there's not a gray area that is a straight up fucking lie yeah misconception the second even if you were pressured into saying yes you still gave your consent now 
there is a whole ass i have a whole like it's a beefy fucking bullet point list about this all right so i'll just touch on it briefly here because i'm gonna get you know into the nitty-gritty of that we discussed it a little bit earlier on that oh come on you know you wanna oh come on just yeah no just go just go with it please 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 and eventually you go oh whatever fine fine okay fine that is not consent okay now how you choose to view that in your own mind is up to you you know you do if your and the reason the reason I say this is because I did not realize what this what this has happened to me multiple times by an ex-partner and I did not realize it for what it was until a long time after so technically it is a form of rape sexual assault technically but I do not consider myself a victim of rape because that is not how my mind processes that because you know, if if Sandra came to me and said this has happened to me, I'd be like, "Oh my god, that's rape! You should do something about that." But in my mind, it's not okay. And you know, coincidentally, this is something that is talked about in junkies. So I'm hauling myself up on that cross. I went through this in junkies. Okay, I'm, I'm aware that my mental my mental assessment of the situation is probably not accurate. But I'm not here to say to you if you hear that or later on down the episode, I detail some things and you go oh my god that happened to me you don't have to classify yourself as a victim of rape if that is not how you truly feel but if i tell you these things and you go oh my god holy shit i was raped that's also fine okay how you feel about this situation is how you feel about this situation and i am not here to hand out labels Hmm. but being pressured is not consent whether it is nagging whether it is someone being nasty and unpleasant you know there's a whole like i got a whole list we'll go through but again if that yes that consent is not freely given and enthusiastic it is not consent okay number three these are not numbered i'm just going through them in order but whatever Mm -hmm. and this this i hear a lot you will hear it a lot as well being aroused counts as consent being wet or being erect counts as consent well you wanted it they wanted it they were hard they wanted it she got wet she wanted it no 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 your brain and your body obviously they're very you know they're quite tight-knit they're pretty close guys but your body it does a lot of things automatically okay and those things do not necessarily link up with what you want Mm. so i have an anxiety disorder my primal brain views making a phone call as being chased by a saber-toothed tiger, okay? And it does all the things that it would do to help me if I was being chased by a saber-toothed tiger, but I'm not. I'm sitting in my house on the sofa having a fucking panic attack because I have to phone the fucking doctors, okay? They're not connected. Logically, I'm like, I'm phoning the doctors. Why am I shaking and sweating and hyperventilating? This is ridiculous, okay? The thing about your reproductive part, your genitals, is they are designed to respond to stimuli, okay? And assigned female people at birth, they are designed to get wet in response to friction and stimuli because, first of all, it protects you from any internal injury or damage. And secondly, your reproductive organs are not the smartest things on the planet and they go, oh, a baby, you know, and they respond in kind. And ditto assign male people at birth you are designed to respond to stimuli to become erect to be ready to mate it is a primal instinct it does not in any fucking way equal your consent and i am sick of seeing that especially in relation to assigned male at birth people who have been raped they got he got hard he wanted it they got hard they wanted it no No, 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 no. It's got a big fucking hammer and hit everybody over the head that says that. No. That is, again, not even a misconception, a lie, a straight up lie. On the back of that, orgasms count as consent. No, the fuck, they do not. No, they don't. Okay? It is a response to stimuli. 
Okay. That's all it is. And I know that this is a a source of, you know, embarrassment and shame among people who have been sexually assaulted, who have been raped, that they think they must have wanted it in in, you know, subconsciously or something because they had an orgasm. No. It is your body's it is your body's response to stimuli. That is it. That is it. And to make my point, if you didn't know, I don't know if Sandra knows this, but question, why do you laugh when you're tickled? It's not funny. It's not awesome. It's not a pleasurable sensation either. But everybody seems to laugh when they're tickled. Do you know why that is, Sandra? I mean, I would just think it'd be a nerve thing, sensitivity or something like that. I don't know. I mean, I've been tickled and I know some spots are more ticklish than others. So sometimes you get a giggle and sometimes you get absolutely nothing. So I don't know. Yeah. It's a, it's a panic response. Mm. Your body literally does not know what to do with the sensation. It does not know how to process what is happening to you. Mm. And it's a panic response. And it is a wildly ineffective one because it's, you are It's kind of disabled. when people laugh um, when they're uncomfortable, which I yeah. tend to do sometimes too. Like, you know, you're, it, it's, it totally feels like an inappropriate response, but it's kind of because you're just so uncomfortable in the moment, your body doesn't know what to do. So you laugh yeah. at something. Yeah. 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 And that's very much, that's very much the same for tickling. You, you are, you know, you're incapacitated, you're disabled to a point because, you know, you, you sort of like your body's twisting and locking up and squirming and you're trying to get away. Mm. So you can't necessarily use your limbs to, to extract yourself from the situation and your body literally does not know what to do mm. with the sensations. So you laugh. It's a panic response. Mm, and again, <laughs> this was something that I don't think, I didn't, certainly didn't know until I had children. Mm. And it came up when my eldest was very young. And I remember my mom joking about it. But it like tickling children is, it's viewed as like a fun game, isn't it? Mm. But like it was like you need to be aware of this because actually the laughter is a panic response and your child may not be able to tell you to stop mm -hmm. so you you know you have to be like don't just go bald in until the child like wets himself or something because maybe they're not having fun right. you know right yeah um and then it, it kind of stuck with me so i'm always really like i'm always really keen if anybody is like you know playing with my kids tickling them rough housing and they say stop i'm like that's it we're done stop mm -hmm. immediately we're not mm -hmm. waiting for a second go around you yeah. know yeah. Another example of this, you ever seen something really cute and fluffy and you're like, oh my fucking God, I want to crush it. <laughs> That's the same thing. It's called cute aggression. Oh and it's because your body does not know what to do. With something with... so cute? Yeah, literally. Your <laughs> you feel so many things that your body does not know, like your brain does not know how to process it. So it just wants to take it away. If it's mm. gone, you won't be confused. <laughs> Is it kind of like when we talk about like Jensen and Jerry, like, oh my gosh, like how could they possibly, like, it's just not fair, like, or just, just get really mad at them? Because <laughs> yeah, maybe. It's like, oh, fucking hell. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, the, th <laughs> the uh, things that happen within your body and the things, mm -hmm. you know, how your brain processes those things can, can, be, can be very God. different. So I bet you didn't know you were gonna you were gonna be informed about tickling and cute aggression no, today. No, I'm gonna no. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell my husband about that. I'm gonna say next time. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a you panic know, response. <sighs> that is the cute I don't aggression think that's thing. gonna help. And the cute aggression. Is <laughs> does, does, your, does your husband tickle you? Like we can cut this out. Is is Ted Ted a prolific tickle? No, 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 no. He's okay. not. Actually, I've like we've done like tests too where I've like tried to get him, like I've tried to find out what makes him what's ticklish for him and not much. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not super ticklish anyway. So I think he's just like, eh. So I think we did it, a, you know, in the beginning hmm. just to like test things out. I'm like, oh, okay, this, this probably is a good idea. <laughs> anywhere. Let's not do this. Oh. That's, but again, no, that's see interesting because I don't know if that's more because I'm just very comfortable, you know, around him as a partner too. And if my response would probably be, you know what I mean? Like your response mm. could be different to different people doing the exact mm. same action. If we're talking yeah. about it being on a panic, you know, on that sort of like panic response, because if you don't know, then yeah, it could be, it could be a different reaction. Interesting. Yeah. It's very interesting. Taught me something today, Carly. Yay. That's, that's interesting that you say that because my husband is fully aware 
<laughs> that if he tries to tickle my feet, he is liable to get kicked in the face, and that is his fault. Mm. And just like he doesn't do it all the time, he mm-hmm. usually does it if I've got him like you know like if we're wrestling or playing okay. around and I've yeah you know I've got him stuck somewhere and mm-hmm. I'm trying to tickle him and mm-hmm. he will try and tickle me in response but mm-hmm. I take no responsibility for that touch my feet at your own fucking <laughs> risk I might kick you in the face you know <laughs> and that is not to say that I am uncomfortable with my husband we've been together nearly nearly right. 12 years now right yeah but I might kick you in the face you know <laughs> And that, that instinct draws no distinction between people I know and love and trust and a random person. You know, in his yeah. defense, in his defense, he does not use this against me. He only uses it when I tickle him in places that he doesn't like mm-hmm. and makes him like crease up and go, oh, fuck. Yeah. And then his, his defense response is to try and maybe let go of him. Yeah. And that's where we end up. But yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, all of tangents aside, orgasms, it's a stimulation to... It's a it's a stimulus response. It's a response to friction and stimulation in certain places. And again, it's you know it's not uncommon. It's not unheard of for assigned female at birth people to um, orgasm even while you know being penetrative, penetratively raped. But it is much more common for assigned male people at birth. And again, that's what your body is designed to do to mm-hmm. mate. Mm-hmm. So all it sees is stimulation and there we go. Orgasm, mm-hmm. mate, breathe, fuck. And it has absolutely no bearing on your consent or your desire to be in that situation. So like I said, hopefully there's not too many of you listening that are going, oh, fuck, that's happened to me. But if there are people out there who have, you know, God forbid had any of these horrible things happen to them, and either getting aroused or having an orgasm happen to you, it means nothing, okay? It is just a stimulus response, and it has no bearing on whether you wanted the situation or not, or whether you were asking for it or anything like that. Please, from me to you, hear that. It is just a stimulus response, okay? Next thing that you hear a lot, assigned male people, assigned male at birth people cannot be sexually assaulted. Yes, they can. I don't know why this became prevalent. I would assume probably. I think you hear that more in the assigned male at birth people cannot be sexually assaulted by assigned female at birth people, or they cannot be raped by assigned female at birth people. And, you know, there's probably some kind of, you know, lack of penetration in there that, you know, Hmm. we'll get into that. Um, or, you know, like a size difference or a strength difference, things like that. It's all nonsense, okay? Rapists can be assigned male at birth. They can be assigned female at birth. They can be anywhere on the gender spectrum, okay? Your genital configuration, your gender identity has absolutely no bearing on whether you are a rapist or not. just doesn't, okay? Mm. So let's toss those in the fucking bin. On the back of that, Assigned female at birth cannot rape or sexually assault people. Now, this gets spouted a lot. And the thing is, this comes down to laws. Now, specifically in the UK, the legal definition of rape is penetration. It is unwanted penetrative sex. And that is all kinds of ick. Like, no, ew, gross. It can still be rape even if nothing went in anything else, you know? But obviously this causes a problem because an assigned female at birth person can absolutely rape an assigned male at birth person, but the law doesn't view it that way because of a lack of penetration in the on the part of the rapist. And it's all kinds of ick, okay? But it is a legal definition at this point. And I would imagine the law surrounding the legal definition of rape probably vary state to state in the US. Um, I certainly didn't look up any of them. No, I'm looking up um, Department of Justice Archives an updated definition of rape. This was back on January 26, 2012. Um, The change sends an important message to all victims that what happens to them matters. And to perpetrators, that was because of voice of survivors, advocates. A forcible rape has been defined um, as is that the unforcible carnal... rape. 
I don't know. It just says forcible rape has mm. been defined as the carnal knowledge of a female forcibly and against her will. That definition unchanged since 1927 was outdated and narrow. It only included forcible male penile penetration of a female vagina. The new definition is the penetration, no matter how slight of the vagina or anus with any body part or object or oral penetration by a sex organ of another person without the consent of the victim. Hmm. The first time ever, the new definition includes any gender of victim and perpetrator, not just women being raped by men. It also recognizes that rape with an object can be as traumatic as penile slash vaginal rape. Okay, this definition also includes instances in which the victim is unable to give consent because of temporary or permanent mental or physical incapacity. There's a whole thing. There's a whole thing mm. on it. Yeah. Okay. That's actually really, really inclusive. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. I should probably go and look up our legal definitions then, because that was just that was just something I, I might I might add this. Reading. I might add the link just down at the bottom of the the doc. Yeah. Too, just to have it. You know what? In there right yeah. Now. Sandra will add um, that Department of Justice thing, and I will <laughs> I will go and hunt down the UK legal definition of rape as well. But as to my understanding, it is still currently penetration only. I, whether that is just penile penetration, I don't know. I will go and. I'll go and put some links in the description, guys. But the point is that assigned male at birth people can't be sexually assaulted and or raped, and assigned female at birth people cannot rape or sexually assault people is wrong. Okay? Now, you can get into the nitty-gritty of what, as we just discussed, the legal definition of rape, what, what defines rape, what is the difference between sexual assault and rape, but I'm not going to frankly, because if consent is withdrawn for anything and the person proceeds regardless, that is rape in my eyes, okay? Now, I know sexual assault is a legal thing, but if I say no and someone keeps going regardless, that is an act of rape against my person. And if you feel differently, please reach out. I would love to have a discussion about this. I am speaking from my personal perspective okay next misconception assigned female at birth people cannot be raped slash sexually assaulted by another assigned female at birth person and again this is all tied into the laws around you know what is the legal definition of rape penetrative sex blah 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 blah, blah. equally nonsense okay <laughs> yeah there are many different ways to be penetrated besides just with a dick for a start off um and secondly Rape, in my mind, has less to do with the specific act that is being committed and more in the fact that you have said no and someone is continuing regardless. Mm -hmm. So, again, I'm not here to hand out labels. If any of this stuff resonates with you and makes you feel any kind of way, that's fine, okay? I'm not here to hand out you are a victim of rape label to everybody who might resonate with any of these things. But it's just... This is my personal perspective. You are allowed to feel however you want to feel about this. As I said, <laughs> quite a lot of this list has happened to me and I still don't consider myself a victim of rape. So, you know, tied into, God, there's a lot of things tied into the fucking law, isn't there? Jesus Christ, <laughs> guys, please. You only need consent when it comes to penetrative sex. No, no, you don't. You need consent when it comes to any sexual act i mean ideally you need consent when you do anything to a body that is not yours for any fucking purpose because it's not yours you know yeah. but not to say that this is a sex podcast but you know i'm not here to argue you know grievous bodily harm or an assault charge that's a whole different thing you know it's different we are looking at sexual consent in this place so you need consent to do anything sexually with another person, even if it's just a kiss, okay? Even if it's just a kiss, right? So that's bullshit. Again, that's lies. This is kind of an outdated one, but uh, unfortunately it still exists. If you are married or in a relationship, consent is assumed or no longer needs to be sought. No. Every time, guys. Every time. Now, I would assume... If you're in a relationship or you're married or, you know, whatever, you probably have a, huh, huh, 
kind of signal, you know, maybe you send a text message, maybe it's a cheeky wink, you know, whatever it is. But I assume you have some kind of verbal or non-verbal signal that's like down to fuck. Okay. (laughs) But you still cannot just assume that because you are down to fuck, your partner is also on board. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, me and my husband, I'll I'll be straight with you guys. I'm autistic. We text each other. (laughs) Literally, we'll text each other and be like, do you want to bang today? (laughs) But also we have children, so we cannot just spontaneously start fucking on the sofa. I have kids. You know, things have to be scheduled around the children's sleep. So you have to, you, you know, you have to check in with these things kind of early. But there's been many times when my husband has been like, do you want to bang? And I've been like, I would rather stick pins in my eyes. I still love you, but not today. And he never assumes, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I mean, you know, sometimes you're having a cuddle in bed and things occur, but he also wait for consent you know he doesn't just like you know not to be too graphic but just that like grabbing at places and just assume that this is go time mm-hmm. he will wait until i'm like yeah yeah okay we could do this because sometimes things happen and i'm like i love you so much but i would rather stick pins in my eyes right now <laughs> please get your dick away from me it's it happens. just everybody's body is different everything that's going on within a person is different at any given time it's like the stars have to align for these kinds of things to occur. And it doesn't matter if you have kids or not. <laughs> yeah. As you get older, it becomes less of a priority. Yeah. For fucking sure. <laughs> for fucking sure. You know, I promise you, if there's anyone out there in your 20s that are listening and you're like, I will never, I will always want to fuck. You won't. It's statistically very unlikely. But I think Life that's happens. important too that, you know, and I think the more we I know the more I'm learning about, you know, sexuality and every, like the spectrum that people can fall on that, you know, there's a lot of people that it's just, it's, it's never a been a priority, you know, and it's okay yeah. that it's not a priority and it's good to have a partner that is agreeable and understanding and knows how you, your body brain wants to work together and sometimes not. And, you know, being okay with that. I think it's so very important. And unfortunately, I know it's just not a thing in a lot of marriages. Like there's still even today, the expectation and probably mainly the wife, you know, that if the husband's ready, it doesn't really matter. I think that's Mm -hmm. a big misconception that a lot of people have to deal with in their daily lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, I'm just I'm just looking it up now, but marital rape was not recognized as a crime until quite recently mm-hmm. in the UK. 1991 that it was criminalized in the UK. Before 1991, a wife could not bring a charge of rape against her husband because you're married, consent is assumed. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, marital reforms of marital rape laws began in the United States in the mid 1970s. By the 1990s, most states differentiated the way marital rape and non-marital rape were treated. As we get further into, you know, <laughs> the 2000s, marriage is not a lot less people are getting married. So where does that leave you from a legal standpoint? Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. If you bring a case of rape against a long-time partner, does that, you know, is that treated the same in the courts? Is it treated as a common law marriage? You know, right. what is the legal definition around yeah. that? So yeah. it's a, yeah, it's a difficult one, but um, well, it's not a difficult one. It's one that the law needs to fucking get its shit together with, you know, yeah. like rape is rape, whether you are married or not married or whatever, you know. Rape, rape is rape. I think it's. I think it becomes a matter of treating your partner equal, uh, and that's where some people view marriage even today. You mm. know, where the wife is under the husband, not partner, and mm. that's that's a big difference. I think. Absolutely. So this is apart from consent cannot be withdrawn. This is probably the loudest thing that you will hear around consent and that is anything around what a person is wearing 
or that they were asking for it. So they were acting a certain way. They were drunk. They were high. They were wearing revealing clothes. Anything that puts the burden on the victim. Okay. I actually shared it around this summer. Um, It doesn't matter what a person is wearing. They're not asking for it. You think like a rapist. Mm. It's that simple. Okay. There is no such thing as asking for it. That is not get your fucking shit in line, you know? And again, guys, get your bros in line, get your shit together. Okay. Mm. You know, that kind of culture is something that as loud as assigned female at birth people scream, we can't change that. If you are, if you consider yourself one of the good guys, you know, you never raped anybody. You would never rape anybody. But you laugh when your buddy makes a joke about what the girl across the bar is wearing. You are perpetuating rape culture. Get your fucking bros in line. Okay. That is the only way that this will change. If you consider yourself to be a not all guys or a good guy, get your buddies in line. It's that simple. So that is a straight up fucking lie. It's not even a misconception. Nobody is asking to be raped, guys. Nobody. Okay? I don't care what clothes they're wearing. I don't care how they're acting. I don't care if they're drunk, if they're high. What, nobody is asking to be raped. Okay? That's bullshit. Right. Yeah. Get down off my little fucking soapbox now. I'm not. I'm going to get back on it in like <laughs> <laughs> And the last misconception around consent is consent around underage people. And this is... These... This is difficult, okay? Um, because obviously there are laws in place and there is age of consent everywhere. And then I think it's really interesting that like the age of consent across the US is 18, which I think is a bit high, but you you do you guys. Well, every, We're gonna come in and start hammering your legal every system. States, I think every state's a little bit different. Yeah. I know that a lot of states have like Romeo and Juliet laws as well. You know, where if someone's just over the age of consent and someone's just under the age of consent, we're not going to, you know, <laughs> nobody's going to jail. You know, it's it's a kind of a murky ground, that one. But the laws are there primarily to protect children from predatory adults, you know, people significantly older than them. They are not there to stop teenagers you know, exploring their sexuality and, and themselves. So the age of consent in the UK is 16. Mm. Okay. Now, I would argue that a 15-year-old and a 17-year-old don't have that much in common, really. You know, there's even though it's only two years, they're um, it's vastly different life stages, especially when you consider our education system and things like that. But, you know, there's a little bit of like... I don't want to say wiggle room, but, you know, mitigating circumstances, maybe. It's taken mm. into account. If two 14 or 15-year-olds are messing about, that's not rape. They're both underage. Mm -hmm. That's not, you know, just because they're both underage, they can still consent. And it's those laws around the age of consent are for protection more than they are to, you know, govern bodies, as mm. it were. Mm -hmm. At least you would you would hope it would be that way. But unfortunately, those kind of age of consent laws are, seem to be being weaponized more and more now as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But, you know, there's just there's a lot of misconceptions around those age of consent laws. And I would advise you to, you know, if you are around the age of consent, first of all, you are not old enough to be on this podcast get out <laughs> no i'm kidding <laughs> i'm kidding you can say you can say sit down but i would encourage you to look up the rules not well the the laws maybe guidance if this is something that concerns you or far more likely if you have children because <laughs> mm. this is not a young people podcast if you have children that are approaching those ages look up you know the legal things and the best practice like you know like guidance and things like that because i will tell you and i'm sure you all probably remember they're gonna fucking do it right it don't matter if you ban closed doors in your house and never let their partner come over they'll find somewhere to do it mm -hmm. so you might as well just be informed and be 
the cool parent. And I know you don't want to be the cool parent because I don't want to be the cool parent. My preteen is turning 12 and my stomach fucking turns every time I think of that. Does that mean that I'm going to ban sex from my house? No, because Mm -hmm. they will go out and do it in a bush or a bush shelter or their partner's house or a friend's house. They're going to find a way to do it. So, you know, if you have kids around that age, my commiserations, I'm very sorry. It's awful, isn't it? God, I fucking hate it. Oh, gosh. I'm just looking at marriage age by state and... Oh, no. New Hampshire's 14 years old. That is vile. That is a baby. And... That is a whole ash. Someone could get that baby for a nap. Hawaii is 15. Kansas is 15. Missouri is 15. Yeah, and then the the rest are like between 16, 16 to 18 minimum. Like, yeah, minimum marriage. (sighs) Yeah. So in in the UK, you can't get married without your parents permission in no not in the uk in a lot of those say that too yeah yeah in england you have to be 18 you can get married younger i think 16 and 17 you can get married under 16 i think but you have to have your parents permission because there is a very long tradition of people going to it is a place in scotland called gretna green and is literally just over the scottish border so it is like one of the first places you would come to in Scotland. And there is a long history. And, you know, it's basically a meme at this point Mm. of kids, 16 year olds running off to Gretna Green to Mm. get married because you could get married at 16 without your parents' permission in Scotland. Okay. But, you know, at least Mm. that in lines with the age of consent, you can be married off at 14, but you can't fuck till you're 18. Mm. But you can if you're married at 14. Mm. Weird. So weird long. isn't it yeah, yeah. and I, I don't know I've, I've not looked into this but I can imagine not a lot of those marriages are to other 14 year olds no no yeah okay <laughs> that's <laughs> that's a whole other fucking tangent for a whole other episode yeah, yeah. but yeah consent around underage people just take a look as I said if you're around that age um, or as is more likely with our audience, if you have kids around that age, approaching that age, I'm in solidarity with you people. <laughs> Eleven is hell. I imagine twelve <laughs> will be more hell. <laughs> just you know, just education is key. Information mm. is key. Just if you're not sure, Google it. You know, yeah. and from one reluctantly cool parent to all the, they're gonna do it anyway. You might as you you're not achieving anything by not allowing it in your house. Okay. Just tell them to put on some fucking Barry Manilow really loud and maybe go on date night. Okay. Cause they're gonna do it anyway. But that is uh that is that is my list of misconceptions. And as I say, that is not an exhaustive list. That is just the most common mm-hmm. ones that I you know, some of them, some of them were my own and some of them were things that I Googled you know blah 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 blah. none of this is particularly niche information that you would need specific links or places to go it's all just out there on google yeah yeah this has got dark and depressing hasn't it guys we kind of knew it wasn't going to be the yeah the cheeriest of topics too for a lot hopefully we might be able to bring it bring it around a little bit when we we well we're gonna next we're gonna try we're going to try. We're going to try. At least make it, so, make it entertaining, not necessarily. <laughs> oh, boy. <sighs> yeah. You know, so we're going to just, we're going to take just a little bit of a step back from real life because, um, you know, this is, <laughs> this is a fanfic podcast. This is not a Carl yells at everybody about consent podcast. Maybe I should make one. Maybe I should make one. <laughs> <laughs> Carl just yells. The, you remember that Family Guy episode, you know, that with, where Peter had the thing on the news, you know, it really grinds my gears. I have a podcast like that that just mm-hmm. Carly just yells about shit. Mm-hmm. Right. But <laughs> let's bring it back to <laughs> fan fiction and all the wonderful fun stuff that you can do with that. So I don't know if consent play is the right word for it, but that's what I'm calling it. So maybe consent know, exploration, maybe that kind of thing. Maybe along those lines. Oh, yeah, maybe. 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 But you know, I think I called it. I think I called it consent play because that is what I view. What I do, mm-hmm. I play with mm-hmm. consent. I twist yeah. it and move it around. And blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But this was a big list because there are so many ways you could do this. So we're going from 
Things that only exist, things that can only exist in Supernatural. Right. So the most supernatural things down to things that can and do happen in real life. So we're going to try and be a bit, you know, a bit lighter, but it's going to get real heavy at the end. So again, if you got a no pout, no hard feelings. We'll see you in the yeah. next one. Yeah. Please protect yourself. But um, these are tropes, I suppose, that I see most often. And I'm a big fan of a lot of them. I am I know too. Sandra's a big fan <laughs> of a lot of them. You, uh, maybe we're not the people to be yelling about consent on the internet. <laughs> but again, I will say, you know, I will, I will haul myself up on the cross for junkies and, you know, accept all your very accurate comments about how absolute dare I, I was a fucking hypocrite I am. Um, but we'll start off with, as I said, we'll start off with the most supernatural things. So these are categorized and then like, sort of clarified i suppose so magic okay this is completely this cannot happen in real life okay it's, um, unless you argue roofing is a kind of magic but that's a whole different thing and i'm not gonna get into that magic it can't happen in real life guys i've decided i have spoken so sex pollen god damn that's popular in Winces, isn't it guys it really hell. is but it's it's popular across is the it popular board. everywhere oh yeah yeah and just like reader insert and yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, you know, it's a everyone's consent's been taken away. We've been drugged, magically drugged, you know? Um curses, spells, hexes, potions. I think sex pollen is like its own thing, because that's yeah. kind of like I don't yeah. know, you I was like, I always imagine dust, you know? Because sometimes sometimes it's like you know like when witches go and like mm-hmm. blow shit on the boys. Sometimes it's that, but then sometimes it is literally pollen from a flower. So, yeah, yeah. It's different. Curses, spells, hexes, and potions implies an intent, whereas sex pollen could just be an innocent flower that causes fucking. You know, I'm sure they exist. It's irrelevant. Mm. All those kind of, you know, well, curse to have sex within 24 hours with your true love. Yeah, you know, curse to have sex within a period of time is quite I've common. Written that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just sitting there going, that was me. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, spells. Oh, somebody accidentally picked up the wrong thing in a mm-hmm. in a witch's house, or you know, oh somebody... my gosh, there's one. Oh, it was yeah. There's so many. There's so many good ones. I yeah, hate saying that, but there's so many. <laughs> Sandra good loves ones. this one. Sandra loves this trope. <laughs> this is probably yeah. one of my favorite. Like, if you're talking about consent play, I think the magic aspect of it. I really do. do you like. think? Do you think that's because it's so far from real life that it feels safer? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because it's Fair. not. I've always said like horror movies don't like. It's not necessarily like I. I kind of like squick about certain things, like you know about like limbs getting cut off and blood everywhere and all that stuff. But a lot of times, the horror stuff that freaks me out the most are more like the thriller stuff when it comes to people going absolutely mm. batshit crazy and the things that they will do so i think supernatural has this wonderful world where you get to explore and i think you mentioned it later on like at a point like it's just it's a safe place to play with those things to know that there's not really a chance any of this is going to happen in real life you know unless we are magically transported to an alternate universe which again requires magic so i don't think it's going <laughs> to happen yeah yeah absolutely yeah but um you know curse of spells hexes whoops somebody picked up a cursed object you know which mm. cast a spell on you put a hex mm. bag in your pocket potions mm. seem to be less prevalent in the supernatural universe but um you know it happens i just feel like so. curses spells sex pollen fuck or die that's like a yeah. thing i've seen a lot um yeah yeah that was that was my <laughs> that was my final point fuck yeah. or die yeah. however it happens you have to fuck your true love your heart's desire anybody um there's quite a lot there's quite a lot of um Wincess ones around being unable to orgasm on your own. Mm. Um, so you need to have your brother help you out, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, I've I've read quite a few of those. Um and the great thing about the great thing about fuck or die, and obviously all of these, you know, sex pollen curses, they can all cause fuck or die situations, mm-hmm. is that they can be 
non-consent, like nobody is having a good time. They just don't mm. want anybody to die. Um, mm. I shared that fic with you, didn't I? For we did it for that uh, one. Yeah, that one with the, with the brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That mm-hmm. that was a yeah. That was a fuck or die where they were just like, oh, fuck. yeah, all right, whatever. Yeah. You know, or it could be like unrequited love. You know, one sided love. Everybody mm-hmm. could be into it, and this could be like the first time. You know, like it's, it's a whole spectrum of stuff that you. Well, can there's do. almost like this layer of consent. In like there's layers yeah. of consent in there that people aren't aware of in some weird way that it becomes again consent play, you know, mm. for the people involved in it, yeah. um, one way or another. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the next trope is we're starting to move into the the real world a little bit, but not quite yet. So demonic possession, demon blood addicted. <coughs> Huh. Um, I don't know anything about that, lads. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all right. All right. Yeah, no, hi. <laughs> it's me. I'm the problem is me. Uh, Solus. Solus Sam counts as, um, I don't say counts as being under the influence because it's not, it's not Sam, is it? It's Robo Sam. He, he, I'm sure he does know right from wrong, but there's, a, there's an element of, you know, there's an uh, element. He's, of it's that's so complicated. He's yeah, so, why does he have to be so complicated? <laughs> he so looks complicated. damn fucking sexy doing it. That's why. That's why. You know, I always said I was going to write a soulless fic, and then you know, you see what happened was mm-hmm. demon demon charging yeah. into my brain. It was like the fuck you are. Yeah. So <laughs> here we go. But all those kind of you know, um, being possessed, being addicted to demon blood, being soulless. You know, none of those things can happen in real life, but mind altering substances can. Mm-hmm. So, and. Oh, Dreamer, bless her fucking heart, Dreamer. She she knows I'm mad about this. It's fine. <laughs> she made an argument that Dean is constantly half lit. How, how solid grounds are we on for his consent to anything? Because he's perpetually a little bit drunk. It's not an argument I'm going to get into, but it's worth you know it's worth considering. Mm-hmm. So mind altering substances in general, I guess. I suppose maybe roofing would come under that um but i'm thinking more like mind altering substances that you have chosen to imbibe in so alcohol drugs alcohol are there any other mind altering substances apart from alcohol and drugs <sighs> no. endorphins maybe endorphins mm. because if so you your brain getting in on it yeah and changing yeah. up what's going on chemistry wise and stuff yeah, yeah so if like for example bringing this back to a bdsm thing you know if you're if you're midway through a scene and you know you're you're deep in subspace or whatever and you're absolutely flying high on endorphins you may think or want to do more than you can handle and i that's a mind-altering substance i think mm, mm-hmm. so and in that situation a good dom would be able to keep you know keep the rules in place and keep the scene proceeding no matter how much the uh the dar- uh, the sub or the bottom or whatever is begging for you to I don't know slit their throat mm. bathe in their blood that's shut up <laughs> 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 you know a good a good dom will have a handle on the situation and not let things go too far but yeah you know the kind of like endorphins adrenaline the kind of stuff that you can get from you know BDSM kink scenes and I imagine you can get it from other places um mm. you know like I don't know what if you just climbed a mountain and you're like holy shit this is amazing but oh, yeah yeah you know yeah no i definitely yeah i mean just in general endorphins (laughs) or or going to a convention (laughs) (laughs) holy shit i just saw jensen knuckles let's fuck you know maybe it's not not the greatest idea you know you're in a a crowded convention hall there's loads of people everywhere don't fuck that that's a terrible idea um but yeah my my (laughs) mind altering substances um both supernatural and and benign (laughs) is another kind of another kind of consent play and that does open a whole i think that is i mean if nobody looks at junkies for like five seconds that is one of my favorite places to play because it's there's so many layers to how someone can consent and you know what is what is the true meaning of consent and you know I th- there's, a, there's a lot of sand in that sand pit to play with so that is that is a personal favorite of mine mm-hmm. uh state of mind so this is more irl 
know, he kind of moved away from the things that are exclusively supernatural, but a lot of these things wouldn't happen in real life. So we should fuck. It's the end of the world. Mm. Um, you've only got two months left on your demon deal. We should fuck, you mm. know? Somebody just died. We should fuck because we're sad and we don't know what else to do with ourselves. Right. You know? Yeah. Guilt. You know, somebody died because of your misactions. We should fuck to get our minds off it. You know? Comfort. Yeah. That, like, the comfort. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Addiction in general. So even if the person is not currently under the influence, being addicted to something is a whole different state of mind, even when you are sober. You know, it's it twists everything, your whole state of mind. Um, so I think that, like, actively being high and just being in an addiction state are two different things. Mm. But they both do fall under, you know, how much consent can this person really give, you yeah. know? Yeah. So, again, these are all just ways of playing with consent. Oh, my God, it's the apocalypse. It's the end of the world. Oh, we should definitely fuck because we might not have another night on Earth. It, like, like That literally happened on yeah, Supernatural. Yeah. Dean, Dean's, Dean's used that line. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> or he's claimed, give... or he's claimed to have used that line, uh, like with Anna, and then he tries it out on Joe. So you know that yeah. there's been like you know some situations where that's that's been a thing. Yeah, yeah. are mm -hmm. you really giving me a last night on Earth speech? You know mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. that's happened. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and there are a whole a whole bunch of um, fakes around Dean's demon deal coming due. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the various different apocalypses that have happened. Yeah. That's a really common, common trope mm -hmm. in fic mm -hmm. as well. So, again, we're moving more into IRL. So, consensual non consent. Now, I will say the whole reason that this episode exists is because when we were talking in, it's not come out yet, but the next episode in this trilogy is around very specific BDSM things and consensual non-consent came up and I was trying to find a way to fit it in into that episode and I was like it just doesn't go mm. anywhere in this episode so I was like Andre, I think I need another episode mm -hmm. <laughs> so cons and, and it, consensual non-consent it, it just wouldn't it just would not fit in the other episode but to talk about in this one I couldn't just talk about consensual non-consent I had to talk about all you know all the stuff we've covered all the stuff that's still to come but this is the whole reason that this exists. So consensual non-consent, if you are unfamiliar, is a, um, I don't want to call it kink, maybe like a type of BDSM play, basically, where you, the sub, let's say, it's, it's always going to be the sub, isn't it? They give up their ability to say no. And by that, I don't mean that they fully give up their ability to say no. There are still, or should be, safe words in place, okay? Mm. The scene can still be stopped. But up until that point, nothing that they say go, like nothing stands. So a sub can be begging, crying, screaming, stop, don't, it hurts, I don't want this. But unless they safe word out, the Dom will just carry on regardless. And some people like that, you know, and we're, I'm not, I'm not here to yuck anybody's yum. Okay. I categorically, I'm not. So it can, consensual non-consent can be as simple as, you know, just like a rape scene or, or like a rape role play. And that is, you know, that happens in um, the vanilla world as much as it does in the, in the BDSM world. Mm. You know, it's, it's, I think rape fantasies are one of the most common abnormal fantasies. I think that was the word they use. Because mm. people, like, men seem to, not men, uh, people who frequent, like, Red Pill and incel forums and places like that go, oh, every woman wants to be raped. It's the, you know, it's the most common fantasy for a woman to be raped. No. Mm. It's the most, like, recognized as not. A normal fantasy. I don't know if abnormal was the word that was used, but you know, not like it's it's very common, but not like 
because every woman secretly wants to be raped. Mm-hmm. But it's a common enough fantasy, you know, for like studies to have been done. But right. it's not like, see, I hesitate to use the word normal because right. that's so disgustingly subjective. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, it's 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 not in the normal spectrum of, oh, I'd really like it if Tom Hardy did X, Y, and Z, you know, whatever. Not that I particularly think Tom Hardy is very attractive, but that's irrelevant, you know? Uh, societally accepted. Yeah. There we go. Weird. As yeah, so- but yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. the most common, not societally accepted fantasy mm. of women mm-hmm. assigned female people at birth. So, mm. you know, it's, 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 it's there for a reason, you know, but that is consensual non consent. Domestic servitude is also a type of consensual non consent, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Um, and that can be there doesn't have to be a sexual element to that it can just be you know, domestic servitude but mm-hmm. there, there tends to be a sexual element to it 24-7 total power exchange is see because that's different that's different because then you're getting into like master and slave territory mm. and they can be like 100% never changing you know mm. the the subs or the person giving up their power is never that power is never going to be reclaimed. They are always going to be subject to the whims of somebody else. Okay. And there's no safe word that's going to make that stop. You know, mm-hmm. that's just but you know, you can do to total power exchange for a weekend, for example. Mm-hmm. You know, you can do total power exchange with a safe word. But it is, it can consensual non-consent can be that extreme because okay. A person can willingly choose to give up control over every aspect of their life to another person. And that is a con, they are consenting to that. In you would hope, full knowledge that they may be subject to a lot of things that they don't want to do and they have no way to say no, you know. But a lot of that, that tends to be like a lifestyle thing that isn't truly 24 7. So, you know. It may be in the house that though that that takes effect, but then you go out to a party and you're equals, right? In that moment, you know, it can be yeah. a very private thing. Yeah. So, but you know, that's I'm just kind of trying to get you to like it's a spectrum. There's a whole heap of shit that can fall under consensual non-consent, and it is probably the most common form of consent play that you see. Do you see that? Any of those a lot in Wincest? It's funny you mentioned that because I have a couple of thick links okay. that are consensual non-consent okay. and they are Wincest. No, no, one of them is Wincest and one of them is Destiel. Okay, okay. Uh, I kind of do see. It's not uncommon in Wincest, <laughs> I will say. Mm-hmm. It's not uncommon. I'm guessing it's not as common in in reader insert stuff. Or oh, I think I've stuff. seen a lot of that. Um, oh really? Like going through Ah, which whole... which way which way though? Well, I mean, from what I've seen or looked at, I, I think it's more I mean, we're talking role play, uh marked by there must be a lot. Yeah. I feel like is a good one that hits a lot of those and it's but it's also like Mark of Cain Dean, so you know which way all of that's going to Mm. sort of be leaning towards um but i yeah like the the power exchange i wouldn't say domestic servitude but i don't know like the role play stuff is one thing for me that i i I tend to like to dip my toe in every once in a while but yeah Mm. like the power exchange i've seen a lot not as common either right i i feel like i feel like we might have conversations with a lot of authors that maybe really dive into stuff a little bit more or maybe just don't have a single trope or thing that they kind of like, you know, go back and forth on again and again and again and just like explore that fundamentally. Mm. Um yeah. Yeah. I, I think I've I've definitely just even in searches seen that a lot. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That's mm. interesting. I would I wouldn't have expected that to be as prevalent, but that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, so it is one of the most I've got a smaller the- pool to work with though, Carly. <laughs> <You need laughs> <to start. laughs> 
Yeah, you know, maybe, maybe we should maybe we should check check the tags for consensual non consent. Yeah, I think that'd be an interesting know. one to do at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is, you know, it is common. It is out there, and as we'll get into sort of later on, it's a great way to work through some personal feelings that you might have mm-hmm. around a lot of stuff. So, mm-hmm. but we'll get into that. So you know we we've we've had our fun in uh, in thick land. I'm going to pull you back down to earth now. Sorry. <laughs> so sex under duress. This covers a whole heap of shit, and it is tilted far more towards the real world than it is towards fic. But one of the tropes that we see in fic that would come under sex under duress is the world will end if we don't fuck, which is you know. It's, it's, you know, it's kind of like end of the world kind of thing, but you know, uh, mm. or you have to populate the world if you don't if you don't populate the world with this other person, like you know, yeah, the world's doomed. Like you know, you've got to you yeah. got to procreate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that kind more, of situation. It doesn't it doesn't have to be the end of the world, but more like bad things are going to happen to other people if we don't if yeah. we don't mm-hmm. fuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's the duress part. Now this is the biggest section of any of these lists and it's because this is common as fuck in the real world and a lot of people don't recognize it now when i said earlier that a lot of things had happened to me on the misconceptions list this is the kind of stuff i'm talking about Mm -hmm. so as we go down this list i want you to know me carly queer podcast host a whole heap of this shit has happened to me. Mm-hmm. So if any of these things make you think, oh my God, that has happened to me, you are not alone. Okay? I'm mm-hmm. right here with you. Welcome to the club. It sucks. The cookies are over there. You know? I just mm-hmm. don't want you to feel... I don't want anybody listening to this to resonate with pretty much most of this episode. But if you do, please know, as the host of the you know, the co-host of this podcast, this has happened to me. You know, it is not uncommon. It is so frighteningly fucking common and people don't realise it when it's happening. And some people don't realise it until after. The ex that did these things to me, I had been broken up with a good five or six years before these kind of things started popping up online and I was going, oh my God, oh my God. And I will say when I was reading through lists of these kind of, um, it can also be called coercive rape. So sex under duress, coercive rape. As I was reading down some of these lists, it was like a checklist of my ex. Like just constantly just like, yep, 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 yep. So, you know, it's, it happens. And maybe you don't realize it at the time. Maybe this podcast episode is going to be the thing that makes you realize, but you are not alone. It is so fucking common, frighteningly so. Yeah. But yeah. we'll start with we'll start with the less <laughs> common things and work down towards the more common things. So blackmail. If you don't have sex with me, I will publish your nudes. I will tell your family. I will da 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 da. All that kind of stuff. You know. You, if you don't do what I want, I will do something bad to you. Mm. I think we all know what blackmail means at this point. Yeah. Power imbalance. Now, there are plenty of age gap relationships out there. And I, my stance has always been age gap relationships are fine. Power gap relationships are not. Okay. So when we talk about power imbalance, employer, employee, student, and teacher, there are other ones that I can't think of that I also didn't write down. <laughs> no, but I think that's a majority of it. I mean, that falls under a lot of, or just, yeah, somebody even creatively in the same sort of industry space, right? Mm. Like it doesn't, yeah, necessarily it doesn't even have, have to, to be, be a-, a, a boss. It could be someone, um, you know, offering assistance, um, you know, for one thing over another, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Any Any place where somebody has significant authority over another person and unfortunately sometimes that does come down to age you know a a 30 year old person while in 
you know, on the face of it, they have no real authority over, say, an 18 year old. Mm -hmm. You know, they're both adults. You know, theoretically, they should be on the same level, Mm -hmm. but they're not. That 30 year old is in a, a vastly different stage of life. They have knowledge and connections and stability around them that an 18 year old isn't necessarily, you know, like, sometimes isn't necessarily going to have, sometimes physically cannot. Mm -hmm. There are things you know and learn in your 30s that you just cannot learn until your 30s because you just, sometimes you just need the benefit of time to be able to look back and go, oh, that's why, you know? And you you physically cannot achieve that without time. There are things that happened to me in my 20s that I go, oh, you know, or even like my late teens that I go, oh. And then now I look back on them, you know, I look back on them. They happened in my late teens. I look back at them in my 20s and I went, oh, okay. And now I look back on them in my 30s and I'm like, oh, fuck. You know, you just need, you need that time. Yeah. It comes down to nothing else. Age gap relationships inherently are not bad power gap relationships so i'm never gonna say that a 30 year old and a 50 year old is you know oh it's disgusting it's too too much of an age gap blah, 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 blah. but a 30 year old and an 18 year old yes that's gross don't mm-hmm. do that but uh, so any kind of situation and that could be like you know a student and a mentor not even a teacher just a you know just like an older student a mentor you know yeah. doctor and patient doctor and nurse mm-hmm. you know any situation where somebody has a position, either has power or authority over another person and can say things like, if you want to pass that test, you'll do X, Y, and Z. You know, yeah. if you want that promotion, you'll do X, Y, and Z. You know, any situation where someone can leverage something over the other person is a power imbalance. And that is sex under duress because how much can your yes count if you have no other choice? Mm-hmm. You know, and this is this is where I will fully put myself, you know, on the cross, on the on the on the burning post, whatever you want to say. Come at me with your torches and pitchforks for junkies, because that is exactly what junkies is. How much weight does Sam's yes to Demon Dean hold? when he has no choice he can say no and dean will leave dean will not do the things but he's taking away sam's life essence with him sam will die without feeling his addiction so his yes he has no choice Mm. it's coercive rape it's sex under duress and I didn't see it that way when I first started posting Junkies and then Dreamer and Sandra came to me separately. They had not conversed or, you know, like conglomerated or anything. They both came to me separately. They were like, hi, um, you need to put a, a rape non-contact on this. And I was like, no, I don't. Sam can say no. Like he can say no at any point. He's choosing to be there. And they were both like, actually, he can't. Mm-hmm. This is rape. Mm-hmm. So, you know, come at me. I fully admit that is, you know, I was wrong in that instance and then this is just a real garbage ick list of all the ways that you can be i don't think we're going to have a lot of listeners that haven't come across a lot of these unfortunately probably not and again if you are in that majority uh you're not alone i'm with you yeah i raised my hand up too yeah you know, yeah. we, we got you. Welcome to the club. Yeah. It sucks. The biscuits yeah. are over there, you know, but this is basically just all of the things that I'm about to, and I'm just going to run through the list, guys. I'm, you know, I'm really not going to try and stop and discuss them all unless Sandra has a question or I feel like they are not clear. Okay. First thing, constantly asking you for sex. Please, 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 please. Oh, go on. It'll be quick in a minute, you know? Just consistently asking over and over again. It's coercion. Nagging, wearing you down, falls under the same thing. Trying to convince you to a point that you just feel worn out or it would just be easier to say yes than keep protesting. All falls under the same kind of thing. 
and it's all a form of coercion. So this is one of the most common things that happened to me. I didn't see it for what it was at the time. As I said, it was only years after the fact when this kind of stuff started coming up that I was like, ooh, fuck, all right, cool, yeah. But yeah, trying to get you, by any means, trying to get you to the point where you just go, oh, fine, yeah, whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. Sandra Sandra mentioned it. I don't know if she mentioned it in a comment or she mentioned it to me privately. But um, one of the things that I have said a couple of times on this podcast, and it's a British phrase, pull me nighty down when you're done. Mm. Um, which is, you know, like, <laughs> it's kind of all timey now, but, you know, wife to husband, oh, just get on with it. Just, just pull me nightly down when you finish. Right, like I'm right. checking out of this, you know, mm-hmm. just do what you want. It's ick, you know, mm. fully, fully ick. But that's all, you know, kind of just wearing you down to the point where you just go, oh, yes, fine. And your yes doesn't count because you physically do not have the energy to keep saying no. You don't right. want it. You've just been exhausted, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So touching you sexually when you don't want somebody to touch you sexually again, and then that tends to lead into, oh, look, you're already wet, you're already hard, look, you want it, just, just, just let me, you know? Mm-hmm. Ick. Punishing someone for not having sex. Now, I have a really great example of this that will probably make everybody listening to this steaming, steaming mad. But some people that I know had had a baby and their relationship wasn't great to begin with, but whatever. Anyway, the father of this child was not particularly great at being dad, but, you know, whatever. They had a baby. It's fine. One night, their baby would have been, I don't know, about one, maybe. Still getting up in the middle of the night, not necessarily for food, just didn't sleep that well. Baby wakes up, mum lies there, dad lies there, mum lies there, dad lies there, mum lies there, dad lies there, mum gets up, deals with the baby. Next morning, says to dad, did you hear the baby last night? And dad goes, yeah. Mum goes, well, why don't you get up and deal with it? What, you know, why, why, why didn't you help? I am exhausted. And dad just turned around and went, well, you didn't have sex with me last night, so I thought you could get up with him. Why should I do it? Hmm. Oh, that was that was hmm. so strange, Sandra. Hmm. Sandra's like furiously fist clenched, like, oh, I will stab a bitch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so hmm. that kind of thing, refusing to do, you know, just just punishing someone. And, and that can be any which way. It can be a situation mm. like that, refusing to help, you know, financially punishing someone, taking away money, things like that. And that this ties into the next one, withholding help until someone gives you sex. So, you know, refusing to do chores unless there are sexual rewards for it. Um, refusing to help out with money unless there are sexual rewards for it. All that kind of shit. Mm. It's... you. You can say yes, but it's under duress. You know, what choice do you have, really? You are not saying yes because you want to participate in this. You are saying yes because your life is very difficult if you don't. Mm. That's not freely given enthusiastic consent. Mm -hmm. So again, ties into that, expecting sex as payment for favours. I did the dishes. Suck me off, babe. Gross. Fully ick. You know... And it's never, it's never big jobs, is it? It's never like I built a barn. Please, could I have a blowjob? It's always I tidied the counter, bend over. You know? If someone came to me and they were like, baby, I built you a whole shed, I would be like, Do you want a bath? First of all, (laughs) do you want to you want to chill and relax? And you know, I'm I personally, because so much of this stuff has been leveraged against me, I don't like saying i will do x sexual act if you do y for me because that makes me feel uncomfortable Mm. but you know if someone built me a whole ass shed and then they were like the next day they were like could i possibly maybe have a blowjob i would be like yeah all right (laughs) but you built me a shed yes fine you know but it's never it's never like i killed a bear for you or it's never anything momentous it's always like i did the dishes I yeah. picked up my laundry, you know? 
That's yeah. garbage ick that you should be doing anyway because you live in this house, motherfucker. <laughs> Two of us live here. This is your job. God. The fuck? I'm not your mother. You know? Mm-mm-mm. So Aww. that's... Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, that's the whole. Honestly, like I'm gonna tell my husband if he builds me a shed. <laughs> I should be like, do you have any idea how much sex you would get if you built me a shed? And he would be like, I don't know how to build you a shed. And I would be like, I will have sex with you anyway because <laughs> I love you, and I am not, I am not weaponizing our sex life. I just so there would be more. <laughs> and I can sorry. Uh, what did you say? I didn't hear no, you. I I said- but just know there would be more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, I can't, I can't commit to that. That would be more for like a day, and then I'll be like, no, I'm tired. I'll go there have to be stipulations. Yes. Yeah. How much more <laughs> with a certain amount of time? There would be. Oh, there would be so much restrictions on it that by the end of it, it'd be like, ah, I've built you a fucking shed. This is stupid. But again, I feel like that that just ties into the comfort level you have with your partner that you again can even joke about situations like that. Yeah. With some people you would not be able to joke about in certain situations, certain relationships. There would not be that, you know, where my husband and I kind of joke like that all the time. Well, you know, if you do if you do this, I'll do this, but you know, I may be really tired. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> but like those kinds of like situations. But like, yeah, the fact that this happens in reality is just very icky. Yeah, it's gross. Yeah. It's fully, fully gross. And I want, I want to state here: I have been using predominantly like male voice, if you will. But this happens equally oh, the other yeah. way. Absolutely, it could equally happen the other way. Yeah, and it can be, you know, in, in a heterosexual relationship, the the female partner that is is constantly harassing. Because I think, mm-hmm. I think there's this expectation as well that that assigned male people at birth have this super high sex drive and they're always in the mood. And you know you just have to look at them the right way, and they're down to the fuck. And it's it's just not reality. Mm-hmm. But it's such a prevalent stereotype that you know a lot of assigned male at birth people feel that they have to live up to that. And then yeah. if they're not constantly ready to go, hmm. that you know it's yeah, there's something wrong with them. Yeah. So you know, while I have been using male voice and. I can only apologize for that, but it, that is because I it, I have heard all this from a male voice and that is how it presents itself right. in my head. Right. It yeah. is not gender specific. This can happen mm-hmm. either which way. Complaining that you don't love them because you don't want to have sex. This tends to be a younger person's game, if you will, you know, especially when it comes to a losing virginity and things like that. If you mm-hmm. loved me, you'd do it. If you loved me, you'd give it to me. Blech. No, 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 no. Accusing you of having an affair to manipulate you into having sex. If you're not doing it with me, you must be doing it with somebody. Because, you know, it's inconceivable that someone just would not want sex. So if they're not giving it to, if you're not giving it to them, you must be giving it to somebody. Or the inverse of that, telling you they will have an affair if you don't have sex with them, or they will go elsewhere for sex. I have needs. Yeah, Yeah, Mm. we all have needs. We control them. No, people don't just pee randomly. That's a need, you know? Yeah. So, yep. Uh, using se- using alcohol or drugs to encourage you to have sex. So someone tries to get you a little bit more drunk. You know, maybe even you're just having date night. You know, maybe you're just even hanging out at home. It's a Friday. You've got a long week. You're going to have a glass of whatever. And they keep filling up that glass in the hopes of getting you tipsy, getting you drunk, because you're more likely to have sex with them. That is fully fucking gross. That is like, as almost like roofing someone. I think mm-hmm. you know, and dis- ditto, ditto with drugs as well. But I don't have any experience in that. Well, um, lowering inhibitions in a way that yeah. you hope is going to be to your advantage is basically the game that they're playing. You know, oh well, mm. she just needs to relax. She's just a little too wound up. You know, yeah. or that kind of situation. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, ick. So arguing about not having sex. Every argument you have is about how you don't fuck enough. Every, it's just constantly daily arguments about not having sex. And the last one on this list, but again, this is by no means an exhaustive list. And I will apologize again if any of this resonates with you. I'm right there with you guys. Telling you it's your duty to have sex with them. Now, again, this is, this is more specific to a certain type of person. Um, and I mean, I'll, I'll call you out right wing conservative Christians. This seems to be the attitude from right-wing 
conservative Christian men that it is their wives duty to do these things mm. you know and that's and we talked all about like marital rape and things earlier on but yeah and I I will say as I was going down that list I could easily bring up many examples of exact wording for all of most of these that have been said to me you know yeah but it being being particularly abusive telling you that you deserve bad things because you won't have sex with them was something that my my ex did all the time very very vividly remember in the early hours of the morning and he had been harassing me for and I am not exaggerating hours at mm. this point um and he just rolled over onto his back and just went you deserve to be raped because mm. I wouldn't have sex with him so mm. yeah he was a, he was an absolute fucking gem guys an absolute gem I'm so glad I wasted years of my life on him mm. so yeah a lot of that stuff most of that list doesn't occur in thick um but Again, you can't talk about the way you could play with consent if you don't fully establish what is and is not can consent. I, can I, I just add in, I, I know it yeah. doesn't occur in fic, but I almost feel like, at least in a lot of the stuff that I might read that's reader insert or whatever, um, Sam or Dean end up being the the person to break that trope or that expectation. I think for people mm. in fic and there may even be a situation where there's a comparison of a former partner. Right. And how that mm. is different contrasted against the boys. I think just, yeah. just in my mind, I I've, I've read a lot of those, you know, those situations um, in that. Yeah. Yeah. That was all. That was yeah. all I thought about. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's something I'm going to touch on. We we do only have a couple of sections left, guys. Mm-hmm. We're getting so, there, guys. We're getting there. Gold star. Gold star, Gold star, Gold star if you're still, still with us. With us. <laughs> <laughs> Jinx. Jinx. <laughs> but we are gonna we're gonna try and try and bring it back up now. Mm-hmm. Um, I put that in the middle so we could end on on a higher note. But there was no way to do this without covering those topics. So again, there will be links in this document. There will be links in the description if any of that kind of stuff has resonated with you. And you need somebody to talk to. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I suppose it goes without saying, our DMs are always open, but we are not professionals. Yeah. Okay. We yeah. we cannot offer professional help. We can just offer a listening ear. So mm-hmm. DMs, yeah. email, whatever. But let's bring it back to Fic. Let's bring it back to things that are actually, you know, just playing instead of real life horrible things that happen. So this this whole series is fact versus fiction, but this is Thick versus reality. On AO3, you can have non-con or you can have dubcon. Non-consenting and dubious consent. So I, I didn't know what that was for the longest time. <laughs> I said, I get non-con. What's dubcon? I think it's a double. Is it double? Double? <laughs> <laughs> consent is sexy, y'all. Okay. Right. Dubious. Dubious mm-hmm. consent. Now, yeah. in the real world... There are only sexual acts between consenting adults and rape or sexual assault. There is no gray area of dubcon. Either consent is given freely, enthusiastically, informed, specific, you know, mm-hmm. or somebody's been taken advantage of. Yeah. And rape or sexual assault is occurring. That is is very, very black and white. Mm-hmm. But in fic, you can play a little bit, you know, and that's one of yeah, my aim is to end on a high note with like as depressing as the real world and how it views consent can be. Thick is a wonderful sandpit to play in. So you can have dubcon. Now, this is really prevalent in a a slash B slash O or Omega versus it's sometimes known. Mm-hmm. Those fix are regularly classed as dubcon. And you will usually see in the author's notes, it is due to the nature of the trope, which is that the the people within the trope are more animal-like, are ruled by hormones and such, you know, um, going into heat, going into rut, things like that, and being 
mindless with the need to mate and mm-hmm. how how strong is a consent in that situation so it's it's dubcon by the very nature that you know people in an omega verse fic are not necessarily of sound mind when they are making or they're not even considered equal in a lot of as well yeah 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 Yeah. so a lot of the tropes that i've mentioned can be not not the last bit that's that's different but a lot of the tropes i've mentioned can also be considered dubcon demon possession being soulless sex pollen you know all those kind of things they can be considered dubcon because how you know how solid is a consent if you know someone's a demon or someone's addicted to demon blood or you know there's sex pollen involved or there's a hex or you know or it's fuck or die yeah you know yeah how how solid is that you know, mm-hmm. state of mind, end of the world, deals coming due, you know, sudden tragedy. It's it's shaky ground, isn't it? Yeah. And in the real world, in the real world, it would be, you know, it is shaky ground and it's difficult to untangle because while it is consenting or not consenting, and that is very black and white, state of mind plays an enormous part and I state of mind more than under the influence because a, a drunk person cannot consent, you know, mm-hmm. someone who is high cannot consent. People under the influence cannot freely consent because they are not, you cannot adequately inform them in what they're consenting to, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but state of mind, that's a bit shakier because, eh, you know, yeah. but brain's a funny thing. It's difficult, but in thick, it's, you know, you can have this gray area where you can say, well, this is not straight up non-con, but it's dub-con because this consent is not necessarily solid. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's a lot of a lot of the, the supernatural tropes that we discuss can fall into this. So this is this is where junkies comes in for me, because when I initially wrote Blood Junkie, it was dubcon in my mind. You know, Sam could leave, he could refuse, he could not. Um, you know, and that would be the end of it. And then, as I said, Dreamer and Sandra both came to me and was like, ha, 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 I know. <laughs> and, you know, my one little pawn one shot that's now developed into a fucking albatross is makes it much more clear as the series goes on that Sam never had a hope of, mm. you know, of, of resisting. Although... Yeah, no, I can't even argue that he gave his consent in the beginning because Dean manipulated yeah. him right from the beginning. Yeah. So it's, you know, there's no even solid ground of consent to, like, undermine. There was Sorry, never Carly. consent. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. But then by contrast, by contrast, fic that I most recently published called um, Perfect Balance it's that is balance yeah perfect there we go sandra does not like that fic. no but <laughs> i know what it's it. about <laughs> she she would not enjoy it. she left me a very nice comment that was just basically like i read these because i love you but i don't <laughs> fucking like them which is perfectly reasonable but by contrast that fic is you know really oh, really heavy over the place really heavy and really aggressive and you know it it, it starts with a fight you know and mm-hmm. then Sam is threatening all kinds of, you know, I'll slit your throat, blah, 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 all kinds of shit. But there is never one single hint that Mm -hmm. Dean is not consenting to any of it. And it is far more brutal than anything that ever happened in Junkies. Mm -hmm. But there is not one single moment when I was writing it or anybody that has read it has come to me and gone, "Uh, you know, this is kind of, no, Dean is fully on board all the way across. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the thing is, what is considered non-con and what is considered dubcon is subjected to every author. I thought Junkies was dubcon until people came to me and they're like, ah, no, this is mm. this is rape though. So I suppose if you are, you know, if you're looking for these fix or you come across these fix, you have to be aware that what you might consider true rape slash non-con the author might view 
as merely dubcon. So you know, it's it's just it's just something to be aware of that there is this grey area when we play with these things in fic that doesn't it doesn't really exist in mm-hmm. the real world for a lot of things. Like as we discussed way back at the start of the episode, Dean drinks all the time. Yeah. An argument could be made that he can never consent because he is constantly under the influence. You know, an author may choose to pick up with pick up that and run with it and class it dubcon, and you may read it and go, "What's the fucking problem?" Yeah, you know, yeah. it's subjective. So just you know, PSA: be aware, I suppose. And we reached the last section, guys. Yay! Well done. <laughs> High five to like five of you that are still with you, still with us. Junkies, it's coming! It's coming! It's coming! It's coming! So just kind of. Kind of like my closing points, and I'm sure Sandra will will have some closing thoughts of her own to add. Um, but playing with consent in fic is fun, and I speak as someone who does it regularly. I it is one of my favorite things to do is to take a situation and you know really twist it until you're kind of squinting at it, going, eh, "Really? No." Mm. Um, because that's that's fun to me, mm-hmm. and it's a great way to work through trauma that one might have around the subject of consent. And if your consent has been abused or ignored in any way, having a little, you know, like little dolls that you could do what you want with, and make it however you want it to be, it, I find it really cathartic. Mm. Um. I didn't set out writing junkies to be like a, you know, like a trauma session, like a trauma therapy session, but that's kind of what it's turned into. And also that is why I think as I was writing this, that is why I think it's taking me so long to fix it Mm. because, because it's not easy. Cause I haven't fixed me. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. 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 Or I've made all these horrible things happen. And then I look at it. And horrible things have happened to me. And I go, well, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't spit on my ex if he was on fire. Like that is the level that we're dealing with here. So it's quite difficult for me to look at these two people who, (laughs) even though I did it, even though I was the one that just fucking smashed everything with a big hammer. Now I'm looking at it going, well, they should never, ever speak to each other ever again. This is stupid. So it's 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 but it's a process. Yeah. Working it plus, through. plus, especially with those two characters, it's just they're they're greater than their ability yeah. to overcome and their resilience and stuff that I think a lot of people use in situations yeah. like that when they're writing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, that kind of like you know you have this huge sandpit and you can make anything happen. You're not constrained by the limitations of the real world. You know. You can give your characters superpowers if you want. You can make one of them a demon. You can make one of them angel. You know, you can do anything and it can be anything and it's safe. Mm-hmm. And it, like Sandra talked about earlier on with, um, you know, like fuck or die or sex pollen and things like that. It's so far away from reality that it's safe, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And you know the ending of this book. Mm-hmm. It's your book. You know what's going to happen. So you can do anything you want and you can make it shake out any way you want. And that's that's a, that's safety for a lot of people, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And there's there's a lot of a lot of misconceptions around, you know, like people who have rape fantasies or, you know, people that write non-confix and things and that these people just get off on hurting other people and and stuff like that. And it usually it's the opposite. People who have been raped or have been sexually assaulted, they might want to recreate that situation, that scenario, but in safety and know that they can make it stop at any point. And there's power in that. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's power in taking this, you know, truly awful thing that happened to you and making it yours. You know, mm-hmm. and I am not saying that everybody who enjoys rape role play or rape scenes, you know, is doing it for that purpose. But that is quite common, you know, to want to take back the power in a scenario like that. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. As 
as we've gone through writing thick is it's a great way to work through trauma in general again because it's, you know you have this you have this sandpit you have these stars you can make anything happen so you can create situations and make them come out the way that you wanted them to mm-hmm. and that's so freeing and again it claims back power that may have been taken from you but yeah. this this particular type of trauma i think it's and of course, not not everybody turns to writing, but I certainly I can only speak from my own experience. As I said, I didn't set out to write junkies as a um, you know <laughs> as a as a trauma processing thing, but that is what it's turned into. And when I look back at my own works, I started off writing very soft, very safe things, not because I don't have that in my life, because I do but because I want that, you know, like I wanted that. My life has not always been soft and safe. Mm -hmm. So I gave, I made a world that was soft and safe. And when I, when I felt better and I would start delving into, you know, a little, a little bit more kinky things, you know, like some of my sub Dean stuff, some of my Sam kink stuff. And I felt a little bit better. And once I'd established this, this place of safety, you know, like my little, this is my little corner of the internet and it's soft and it's sweet and it's safe. Then I could move forward and start, you know, poking old wounds and seeing what happened. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's what's happened with, with junkies. That's what happened with perfect balance, you know, because this is my world and I can make whatever I want happen. And I can, you know, I can punish the bad guys if I want to, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, there's always the third thing, which is sometimes it's just nice to smash stuff, all right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just really cathartic to take a big fucking hammer to some stuff, all right? So, you know, sometimes that's the reason people write these things, because it's just nice to just ruin something and know Mm -hmm. that the responsibility to fix it is not on you. You can just Mm -hmm. leave it there to be ruined until you get a whole bunch of comments of people going, you better fix this. Mm -hmm. Then the responsibility's on you. (laughs) But, you know... Sometimes it's just nice just to, you know, like like breaking rooms are a thing. I don't know if they're a thing over there. They're a thing in the UK. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know, you just go and like, just go into a room and just smash some shit over the hammer. Mm-hmm. It's fine. It's whatever. But the most, the most important thing I want you to take away from this is, first of all, if any of this resonates with you, you are not alone. It happens to so many of us. And I don't think it's talked about enough, especially sex under duress, coercive rape. It just doesn't, you know, you talk to a, and again, I don't want to be gendered, but a assigned female at birth person, and they have stories that match up with your stories. And then maybe you talk to someone else, and they also have stories that match up with your stories. But this is not talked about at a societal level. You know, this is not common. This is every person is keeping their own secrets, and it's only when you, you know, kind of reach out and connect that you've realized that your secrets and other people's secrets line up. So that that is the first thing I want you to take away, that if any of this resonates, you are not alone. There are resources in, you know, there are links in this document, there'll be links in the description. If you are in crisis, if you need help, if you just need someone to fucking talk to because this episode has made you realize some shit, those links are there. But the second thing that I want to take away is that consent is vital, okay? It's absolutely should be the cornerstone. And that is whether you are, you know, just in a vanilla relationship with a partner, if you are involved in the kink community, if you are a dom, a sub, you know, you've seen or whatever, it is absolutely, you know, fucking stone one of anything that you do. And you should not be playing around with it in any way without extensive research completely informed and willing partners and safety measures in place, okay? I am not going to yuck anybody's yum, all right? There are a whole bunch of things in kink that make me go, right? But that's fine. This, I will yuck your fucking yum, okay? You do not fuck around with this. Nothing should be happening without enthusiastic, fully given, informed, specific consent, okay? Playing around with it is not a beginner's game and you must be careful, okay? 
Consent is sexy. It's that fucking simple. It is that simple. But that is the end of Carly's lecture on consent. So those are my closing thoughts. And do you have anything to add, Sandra? I think just that I know we're going to, we have another episode at some point too, not even just fact versus fiction, but with an author that we brought back on where we talk about sexual agency and fan fiction and just how I think Mm -hmm. consent, I think maybe that isn't able to be gotten in the real world. I think sometimes it involves exploration through fiction and I think an empowerment in some sense for a lot of the writers of fan fiction um, Mm -hmm. that I think is important and to know there's an outlet and just like how you had said, you know, for you sort of like your journey, everybody's journey in writing it is different. And some people, you know, have other things that they choose to explore throughout and it's all, it's all okay and good. If it's, if it's, you know, something that you, you need and want to sort of help yourself figure out, you know, like you said, it's a, it's a sandbox and Mm. I think it helps I think it's really, it is good. It's, it's, it's therapy in a lot of ways, you know, not that that should be maybe your only one if you really need therapy. So that's why there's good that there's links too, because there's other places where you can get professional help. And, um, you know, if, if you do think you need it, I think it's, uh, I just think it's so how everybody approaches it and views it. It's kind of heartbreaking too, that so many people have gone through it and don't Mm -hmm. think that it's, the same for them, or they make it out as, well, it wasn't as bad for me as it was mm-hmm. for someone else. And I think that, yeah, exploring consent in fiction, I think is really important. And I'm glad that we have such great dolls to explore with, you know, and yeah. figure, figure that stuff out too. That I know helps. a lot of people kind of poo poo, you know, fan fiction to some extent, not people that are listening to this, but. I just think it's be so important and so enlightening. So yeah, mm-hmm. consent, consent, communication, all of that is important and sexy. So yes. Yes. It. Consent. Consent is sexy. One hundred percent. So I'll throw in a couple I've got a couple of um thick links here. Um so <laughs> none of these episodes ever go by without a dream of wreck because she's written fucking everything. <laughs> but we've got Gravity by Runaway Dreamer, which is a Wincest fic that is it is it is just a scene. Is I think it's quite short for her standards actually. <laughs> um, but it's it's just a scene. But it's Sam and Dean, you know, playing with consensual non consent and how that affects them both and the reasons why and things like that. And it's it's really good as like a snapshot of just why. Mm. It's it's really good. And the second one is the Surrender series by the Pawn Fairy. Now, I have been following this series for so long, and it's got quite a few. It's got quite a few parts to it now. But this is I've refer- I've probably even referenced it on the podcast before. I've definitely referenced it to Sandra. I feel like you've recommended this on the podcast. Possibly so. That yeah. sounds like something I would have done. So I yeah, this, this is one. yeah. Say this Castiel with not masochist Dean, and they have a. Don't they have therapy? Like, there's a therapy thing involved in it too. Yeah, yeah. It's mm-hmm. re- it's it's really good because mm-hmm. it kind of it kind of starts you in the in the middle almost, but then we go back mm-hmm. and we explore how right. they're you know how they got together, how their relationship started, all the little steps that led them to where we find them. Mm-hmm. And then we go forward and, you know, they do therapy with Kane and Crowley mm-hmm. <laughs> separately. Mm-hmm. It's it's great. It's mm-hmm. really good. And it's it's primarily focused on Castiel and Dean. And guys, you know it's good because how often do I recommend Destiel fix? Come on. <laughs> Very small. But it has so many great, so many great moments of like sub drop and dom drop that are handled mm-hmm. expertly. Mm-hmm yellow safe words red safe words you know all those kind of things and then on top of all that it showcases you know a, like a consensual non-consent relationship where Castiel is a sadist he likes giving pain 
Dean hates receiving the pain, but he does it because he likes submitting to Castiel. Mm. And we go through all that kind of stuff. And then we go, you know, really heavily into total power exchange, domestic servitude, where we have Dean sleeping in a dog crate, you know, with like a, a bag over his head and chained up and stuff. Mm. And he really enjoys that too. And it like, mm-hmm. it's so great at showing you like how a sub like goes into subspace and how it feels to be there. And then how a good Dom brings you back out of that space and back to yourself. Honestly, it is, there is a work in progress installment, but it's like a quite a leap forward in time. So if you only read the finished works, you would still be fine with with the story, but it is, you know, gold star. Excellent. For a lot of that in particular, is that sort of like the struggle for like even cast to figure out how to make that relationship work, mm-hmm. like being the sadist component of it? Like when you were talking about too, like a dom being able to take care of a sub after a situation like that. Like is that, is that mm-hmm. sort of like explored a lot too? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. See, there's the thing is, it's although it's not 24 7, there will be situations where Castiel will, you know, beat Dean black and blue, fuck him, and then just leave him crying. Mm -hmm. But it never feels like he's not taking care of Dean, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Well, there's not as much traditional aftercare as you would see if it was just a scene. Mm -hmm. Castiel is absolutely in it you know, a really attentive Dom mm. um, who is very aware of of Dean's needs. And I think one of my favourite things about this, this series is that they are both frightened of how far this could go. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. Castiel wants to do things to Dean that are very outside of societal norms and Mm. dean wants those things to be done to him and they're both kind of going it scares me how much i want this Mm. that's when they go to therapy Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's it's such you never feel like dean is uncared for Mm. you know Mm -hmm. at any point and also there are points when castiel tries to back off because he is concerned about the effect that things are having on Dean and you watch Dean fall apart without that kind of guiding hand, you know? Yeah. And how much he very much needs to submit and needs to have somebody to, to dominate him. And it's, you know, it's, it's a nice love story outside of all of the, you know, quite heavy kink that it gets into, but it is, Honestly, one of my favorite series okay. of all time. So I highly recommend going and reading it. Gold Star. Cool. So those are my thick links. And like I said, normally at this point, I would cite my sources. There are no sources to cite here, but there is links, a link to the Rape Crisis website, which is a UK based organization that you can reach out to if you, yeah, if you are in crisis, if you need help. There is a link to uh, rain.org, which is a Rape, Abuse and Incest National Network, which is a charity that Sandra has been shouting out in our um, description causes, for yeah. a long time, a charitable mm-hmm. cause. So this is not this is not there for please help. If you can help them, keep helping people. But this is there for if you are based in the US and anything in this episode has left you feeling some kind of way, you need help. That is what this is here for. I also found while I was looking like an international um, kind of like database of crisis helplines, rape crisis helplines and places that you can go because we are aware that not all of our listeners are in the US or the UK, but I don't feel, and I, I maybe Sandra feels the same, I don't want to put words in her mouth, I don't feel comfortable recommending you guys to places that I'm not familiar with. Mm-hmm. So I can only give you information from the UK. Tools to kind of figure it out. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And I suspect Sandra probably feels the same way. Yeah. She can only give you information from the US. Mm -hmm. So I went and I found this database of international places for help. So that is also in there if you need it. So I would hope, 
it is my like my dearest hope that nobody nobody walks away from this episode feeling any kind of way other than like oh that was a good episode i like that i will stick around for more that it, they are there if you yeah. need them yeah you know so that is that is my end sandra's put into this document my notes document will also be available in the description if you would prefer to just come and read some of this stuff i know some people prefer like a transcript so that'll be there sandra's put the u.s definition of rape in there by the time this episode goes out i will also have the the uk legal definition of rape in there as well um just in case you know in case that's something that you want to explore but for most of this stuff it just came from google so mm-hmm. take some of these terms and google them if you if you want more information there are too many unfortunately charities and organizations out there to help with this kind of stuff to list all of the places you can go for help mm-hmm. i have to direct you to google on this one guys that's me i'm done my voice is going out we've been here for so long no and we got through all five pages guys yeah yeah no it was good it was good carly it was a really good discussion yeah i think it'll Thank you. lead in yes it definitely you definitely needed this part before mm. the next one comes into, yeah. into play yes yeah, so i think this is a good primer you know yeah. for the the next part of it so yeah good, good stuff. job good job but yes, if you want to reach out to us, you can email us at idlinginthepala at gmail.com. You can comment on Spotify and use the Q&A section to share your thoughts. All our contact details are on our website, idlinginthepala.com. As Carly mentioned, if you want to you know, DM or just reach out to us that way, feel free. Uh, we, we will always have a listening ear available for mm-hmm. stuff like this. Yeah, no, absolutely. We are not professionals, but we will always listen. Man, it feels shitty to put this on the back of an episode like that, but But if we were know, helpful. Yeah. If we if we were helpful, you know, please like, comment, share, follow, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh wherever you access your podcasts, but especially on YouTube, it really helps us with the algorithm. All hail its benevolence. And we are creeping closer and closer to a hundred subscribers on YouTube. I might get my Impala birthday wish, which would be fucking sweet. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for that. In addition to Rain always being in the causes that we champion in the description, there are the usual ones. So holidays coming up, there are LGBTQ plus talking charities in there if you need those. Election season ramping up yet again in the US. So there are charity well, there are information mm-hmm. in the in the description around, you know, educating yourself, arming yourself with knowledge, what kind of stuff you need to vote in your Check state. It out, yeah. Check out the voting process sooner rather than later, please. Don't don't yeah. find yourself in a situation where you end up not being able to use your voice. So do what yeah. you can in advance. Keep yourself keep yourself updated as well, because we all know that they like to change things around real fucking quick. Mm. to keep yourself updated and updated as as we stand at the moment which is the 3rd of november 2023 we are championing both world central kitchen and doctors without borders who are both on the ground in the ukraine and in gaza helping you know civilians that are affected by the russian invasion of the ukraine and the israel hamas conflict in the middle east and we're not going to pick a side in the israel Hamas conflict we're not asking you to pick a side we are not going to get political about this there are innocent civilians children trapped in gaza and in the ukraine and they didn't ask for war and they need help and that is what these charities are doing world central kitchen is feeding them doctors without borders is providing medical care and honestly let the politicians argue it out. We are looking at the human at the center of this. So mm. it's not political. We're just trying to help people. So if you need any of those resources, that is what they are there for. And if you can help them keep helping people, that would be amazing. But as always, no pressure. So with that, we will say thank you for joining us in the back seat. And we will see you for a hopefully much lighter episode next week. <laughs> Bye-bye, guys. Bye.